All right, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick for this week's breakout watch list. In this video, I'll be covering 10 stocks that I think have breakout potential in the upcoming week. This video is sponsored by Marketsmith, which is this stock research platform that I use for my own trading. As you'll see in this video, I use Marketsmith to break down each stock's fundamentals, group strength, fund ownership, and a bunch of other company statistics. And one quick disclaimer before we begin, this is not financial advice, not trading advice. This is all for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before trading. I'll have timestamps for each of the stocks that we cover in the comment section below so you guys can go to exactly what you wanna see. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I make this breakout watch list every Sunday morning and go live on Tuesday nights. With that said, let's get into it with AMBA. Amberella has an extremely strong group strength rating, A plus right here. It's the second strongest group right now on a relative strength basis out of 197 groups. Um, let's check within that group, this stock is the second strongest out of 32 on a relative strength basis and 12th strongest on a composite overall basis out of 32. It's got a personal relative strength rating of 98. 99 is the highest Marketsmith gives, so that's very strong. Uh, accumulation distribution, B rating, and composite overall rating, 97. Taking a look at the fundamentals, we had earnings per share, minus 72, zero, plus 475 year over year, and then plus 483 year over year. So you can see earnings per share starting to accelerate there. Sales, minus 17, plus nine, plus 28, plus 58. We're seeing acceleration of sales, and then after tax profit margin up six, eight, 12, and 17%. One last thing that I like to check, is fund ownership, is big money flowing into the stock. And you can see from September of 2020, we had 361, now we have 470 funds. So fund ownership is increasing and that's something that we look for. Taking a look at a different chart, you can see Amberella had a nice big base before breaking out on heavy volume after earnings here. We had post earnings drift higher and then we consolidated a little bit as the market was consolidating. Uh, showed its strength because it never really got under um, the 20 day moving average for too long, other than a couple days here. And then we broke out again on heavy volume. This was a stock that I did trade through here. A uh, nice, super clean uptrend. Um, sold the last bit around 200 as we were approaching a round number. Since then, uh, we've pulled back to the 20 day. Uh, still had pretty wide range bars here. Volatility has been increasing. Um, but the last two days, Thursday and Friday last week, we had volatility in, uh, decrease a little bit and we had an inside candle on Friday. So with Amberella, we do have earnings in about 10 days. So something you always gotta keep track of. If that's too early going into earnings, then you don't take the trade, that's fine. Um, but I'll be looking for a break over Friday's high of 191.60 as a potential buy point here or Thursday's high 193.79. Next, we have AMRC. It's in Energy Alternative and Other, which is the ninth strongest group out of 197. That's a group strength rating of A+. If we can find the strongest stocks in the strongest groups, that increases our probability for the trade. So that's why I'm going over group strength. Within that group of 43 stocks, it's the third strongest on a relative strength basis and number one on a composite basis. It has a relative strength rating of 96, composite rating of 94. Whenever, both, whenever a stock has both uh, relative strength and composite ratings in the 90s. That's a stock to, to make sure you have on at least a general watch list because uh, it's very strong and is fundamentally strong as well. Uh, looking at the fundamentals, earnings were up 2, 67, 79, and then 8% year over year. Sales up 3, 19, 23, and then actually minus 3. So that is kind of a yellow flag um, in the most recent earnings. And then after tax, profit margins up 7, 5, 6, and 8%. So it's always good to see profit margins increasing year over year. Fund ownership on this also has been increasing going from 274 to 378 this year. Going to the chart, you can see AMRC had a nice strong breakout around 78% from the low in the base here uh, with good volume. So accumulation of stock up. Since the peak, we've pulled back to the eight day exponential moving average bounced. And now we've pulled back again um, to the 20 day. So 20 day is coming up uh, as we trade sideways. We still haven't undercut the, the low in the first pullback. So we'll see if we do that going into the week. Um, I would love for this to trade sideways for another week, allow that 20 day to come up and then kind of go flat for a little bit and then make a turn out of that, especially with the market kind of extended. I would like to give it a little bit more time, but looking for a break over Friday's high, 95.22 as a potential buy point. Next we have Coinbase, C-O-I-N. Um, this is in computer software financial. It's also in crypto, so a, a couple different groups there. Uh, 20th out of 197, so that's an A group rating. Within the group, it's the fifth strongest on a relative strength basis out of 39 stocks, and number one overall composite rating. 
Uh, it's got an accumulation distribution, B+, an overall composite rating of 99, and relative strength rating of 83. That's just because it IPO'd this year, went through uh, its IPO base, and is now starting to come up the right side of that. Taking a look at fundamentals, earnings per share, we're up 743, over 1,000, over 1,000, and then plus 295. Uh, sales up 495, 845, over 1,000, and then 316. And then after tax profit margin, 30, 43, 72, and 31. Very, very strong fundamentals for Coinbase. Taking a look at fund ownership, uh, we only have basically two quarters to work with, 397, 396. Uh, that is reflected in its September funds. Uh, since then, we've had a very large volume breakout as we're moving up the right side of the base. So I'm guessing in December, we'll see that fund ownership increase pretty dramatically. So from the low in the base, Coinbase did move up 63% and then had its earnings, was kind of extended going into earnings already. So when earnings weren't 1,000% year over year earnings per share uh, in sales like it was the previous quarter, we did see a pretty large gap down. Um, I think it, yeah, about 11%. And then um, it did handle the 20 day moving average pretty well. We had an inside day, started bouncing. Um, and then since then market for growth stocks, unless you're in a very few number of stocks, uh, we did have a down day on Thursday. That's along with the crypto starting to dump at the end of last week. Since that point, crypto has bounced back a little bit over the weekend. So we'll see if uh, that has an impact on the price. So with this looking to get in on a break of a downtrend line, uh, could use yes, or yesterday, Friday's high, uh, 339.41, or if we continue to consolidate a little bit lower, use this downtrend line sometime in the second half of the week for COIN Coinbase. Next we have KKR, and that's a... Next we have KKR, which is in Finance Investments Management, 53rd out of 197, group strength of B+. Plus. Within that group of 113 stocks, it's the seventh strongest on a relative strength basis, has a 94 relative strength rating, and 22nd out of 113 on a composite basis has a 90 composite rating. So two 90s for composite and relative strength, something to watch for. Uh, accumulation distribution, A rating there, that's always good to see as well. Um, taking a look at earnings per share, up 170, 216, 65, and one. So we're starting to see a deceleration of earnings, um, year over year at least. Sales up 89. Um, compared against a negative, so NA, and then uh, 135 and 137. After tax profit margins, 75, 36, 41, and 25, 26. Fund ownership on this has been increasing as well from 825 last September to one, uh, one, uh, 1194 this September. So you're seeing fund ownership increase as well. So KKR had this nice base. We pulled back, undercut that low, and then started taking off uh, from the low in the base to to the peak, we had a 42% move. So it's not gonna be a super dramatic move playing this stock. I mean, 42% is very strong. We had a nice strong uptrend, but it's not like a Roblox where it's gonna go up 20% in a day. Uh, since the peak, we've only pulled back, I think it was, yeah, 9% uh, to the 20 day moving average. We bounced and we actually gapped lower on the 16th and then pushed higher, closed over the 20 day and right at the eight day exponential moving average. This was a good sign to me and kept the, the stock on my radar. If it just kind of dwindled and then flushed lower, I would just take it off. Um, but since then, we've had a couple tightening days and then on Friday, a shakeout day under the uh, Wednesday and Thursday's low and still closed right at the eight day and the 20 day moving average. With this, we have a really nice pivot to work with with Thursday's high 79.16 as a potential buy point. Next, we have LTHM, it's group strength uh, A in chemicals and specialties, which is the 21st out of 197 groups within the group of 47 stocks, sixth ranked on a composite, or yeah, sixth on composite and relative strength. We have a relative strength rating of 94, composite rating 93, 290s again. Again, that's what we're always looking for. Accumulation distribution, A minus, good to see as well. Uh, taking a look at the fundamentals, we had negative earnings there, uh, 0%, and then plus 500, plus 175 year over year. Sales up 5, 34, 57, and 43. After tax profit margin, um, not negative 4, plus 4, plus 7, plus 7. Taking a look at fund ownership, that is increasing from 401 to 532 this September. LTHM, another one that went through a base before breaking out. Let's measure this. 32% up from kind of the handle here. Since then, we pulled back first to the eight day, bounced a little bit, 
uh, was not ready to take off again, pulled in lower to the 20 day. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days with these long lower wicks showing that the stock tried to push lower and buyers stepped in at least towards the end of the day and pushed the stock back up. So there's buying support on this uh, during this pullback and especially at this 20 day moving average line. We have a two day pivot to work with. Ideally this trades like down to the right a little bit more, uh, maybe Monday, Tuesday, and then sets this up better for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But looking for a break over either of these two days highs because they're both the same at 3067 for LTHM. Next we have MRAM in semiconductors, which is the 13th strongest group out of 197. That's a group strength rating of A+, always good to see. Within the group of 40 stocks, it's number one on relative strength and number 16 on a composite basis. Middle of the road there. Uh, relative strength rating 98, composite rating 91. That just shows you how strong the group is. If the composite rating of this stock is 91 and the composite rating out of the group is only halfway through, 40% of the way through, very, very strong group, uh, fundamentally at least. Accumulation distribution, A minus on this. Looking at the earnings, we had negative earnings the first two, uh, or the December and March. And then in June, we had 150% year over year growth and then 119% in September. Sales up three, two, zero, and then 46%. We did have a nice earnings gap up on heavy volume after that 190% earnings per share growth and 46% sales growth. Taking a look at fund ownership, that is kind of holding steady uh, from 37, 38, basically to 39. Again, this is showing just through September, does not reflect after earnings, which we saw a breakaway gap here with heavy volume. So we'll see uh, if that fund ownership increases. I think it will. So one thing I've been paying more attention to is these really, really high volume breakouts on earnings. Uh, I didn't take this trade personally, just off the gap up. It wasn't even on my radar until after the day uh, when I saw this, this bar on this type of volume. After that, I did want to get involved in the name, let it continue higher for one, two, three, four days. Since then, we've pulled back, let's measure that, had a 17% pullback from high to low. We still haven't even tested the eight day exponential moving average, very strong um, so far, and good to action on Friday, gapping down and then buyer stepping in, pushing it to close even on the day. And I wanna point out volume here, massive, massive volume, and then we're lightening up as we're pulling back. So tons of buyers taking positions in this name and not many people selling the move even after a 116% move. So this also qualifies for a high type flag as well. Um, ideally, we see a couple days where this trades sideways so we can get a lower entry point. Um, maybe we zoom into a 10 minute chart or 10 day chart. We could draw a, yeah, nothing super clean there. So probably just a break over Friday's high, uh, 1255 as a potential buy point. But again, uh, if we can give this some time to trade sideways, allow that eight day exponential moving average to come up for support, that would only improve the, the trade odds for MRAM. Next we have MTTR, Matterport. That's in the, the metaverse theme that has been going on right now. Uh, computer software design, 15th out of 197 groups, A plus group strength rating. Within the group of 12 stocks, it's number one on relative strength, number 10 on composite though, uh, not strong fundamentally just yet. We have a relative strength rating of 98, but a composite rating of 72 on the lower end. Uh, a plus accumulation distribution, or sorry, A minus accumulation distribution, good to see. Um, fund ownership has been increasing, 28, 33, 65. And then again, fund ownership, or fundamentals, not very strong. Uh, earnings per share has been negative still. And then uh, sales up 108, 21, and 10. So trying to focus on the strongest themes in the market, uh, we did start to climb the right side of the base on increased volume here, put in, I mean, this is a pretty deep handle. I don't know if you would just call that a handle, a 27% pullback, maybe another base. Um, then we got out on heavy volume, malfunctioned on earnings, tightened up. And this really was the, the, the day to buy the stock with uh, a heavier position. Since then, we broke out 33%, pulled back, let's measure this, 16 and now we, we just had our first inside day on Friday. Good action, um, closing higher, 1.6%. Staying above the eight-day exponential moving average, still very strong. Uh, as volume's lightening up, I, ideally we see the, the daily bars tighten up and we could trade this towards the end of the week. Um, but this is one of the stronger themes in the market, one of the stronger stocks in that theme. So let's see if we can find something on the 10-day. Yeah, 
same thing. Um, we have this nice range through here. So around 28.17 as a potential buy point could work for MTTR. Next, we have another power earnings gap in NEWR. That's in computer software databases, which is the fifth strongest group out of 197. Within the group of 26 stocks, it's number one on relative strength, number eight on composite. It's got a relative strength rating of 97. Composite, a little bit lower with 81. Uh, accumulation distribution rating of A. Taking a look at earnings, we had negative earnings, so nothing to talk about there. That's why the rel uh, composite rating is a little bit lower. Uh, but sales starting to increase 9%, 8%, 11%, 18%, 18%, but still has uh, profit issues. Taking a look at fund ownership, that has actually decreased um, up until September, 389 here. I guess we did jump from June to September, so starting to increase after June. Um, and again, it does not reflect what happened in November with the power earnings gap, heavy, heavy volume coming through there. Likely fund ownership is, in, is going to increase in December's, uh, December's summary. So from the low in the base, we did have a nice run going up into earnings, 32%. Um, that gave you probably a nice cushion to hold into that earnings, which would have gotten you, let's see, well, it gapped up 32%. We pulled back a little bit, 25, and then closed the day up 39% on that earnings. Uh, really, really strong action on heavy volume. Since then, we just started trading down we did have this false breakout and then we shook out under the lows the next day. So when we have these false breakouts, shakeouts, and then start to consolidate, I like to see at least two consolidation candles. Uh, we've seen one on Friday. Let's see another on Monday, uh, ideally Monday and Tuesday before this starts to turn up. Allow that eight day exponential moving average to come up. We did test that on Thursday in the shakeout, bounced right at that area. So first kind of, um, evidence that it, it does get supported at the eight day and then very very tight candle on friday so if this can trade monday and tuesday just around the range then we'll uh, a potential buy point would be thursday's high 121.19 next we have an ipo in nrds nerd wallet i love their website use it all the time for personal finance topics um, it's got a group strength rating of a it's in financial services and specialty which is 28th out of 197 uh, within the group of 62, it just IPO'd, so uh, relative strength compared to the entire year is going to be lower, 28 here. Uh, composite rating, 49 out of 62. That's lower as well, obviously, just IPO'd. Not much uh, credibility in those numbers just yet. Taking a look at earnings, have been negative. Sales starting to increase, plus one, flat, plus 95, plus 92, but profitability is still, still not there for, for NerdWallet. Going to the chart, we had a plus 20% IPO day. Uh, we really moved up, I think it was up 46%, 22% from the close, uh, but then squatted on the day, just got too extended. And from there, we pulled back, pulled back, and we undercut the lows in uh, on the IPO day. After that happens, uh, then I start to take a closer look at the stock. We did get up on the 11th, starting to push out here, consolidated bounced higher, and then we had this inside candle uh, on Friday on very light volume compared to uh, kind of the previous run here. When you're trading IPOs, I like to go down to like the 10 day chart, use 15 minute candles, 30 minute candles, something on a lower time frame because it's so new, there's not much data to use. Uh, so and IPOs move a little bit quicker than other stocks. So going into it a smaller time frame, while less credible um, overall on like larger liquid names, that's how uh, I at least attack IPOs. So you can see um, on Friday, is that Thursday and Friday? Yeah, Thursday and Friday, we started to pull back, tighten up, and now we have a, a nice range to work off. Just a break over 27.54 as a potential buy point. That might be Friday's high as well too, 27.70. Um, so within that range is a potential buy point for Nerd Wallet. If this can trade sideways, again, that always improves the odds when it does start to, to move up. And the 10th stock that we'll be covering today is 10B, T-E-N-B, Tenable. Uh, that's got a group strength rating of A plus in computer software security, which is the eighth out of 197 groups. Within the group of 41 stocks, it's 11th strongest on relative strength, ninth strongest on composite basis. It's got a relative strength rating of 90, composite rating of 92, both 90s, good to see. Accumulation distribution, B plus. And taking a look at fundamentals, earnings per share up 218, 244, 125, and then did fall down minus 22% year over year. Uh, warning sign there. 
uh, going to sales up 22, 20, 21, and 23 percent. So holding steady with their sales earnings or sales improvements year over year. After tax profit margin 12, 12, 7, and 6. Taking a look at fund ownership, let's see, that did increase up until, yeah, has been increasing um, since December of 2019, now at 449 in September of 2021. You don't have to be a chart expert to see this nice cup and handle forming. This is a little bit early in the handle, especially after, let's see, was this February? No, December. So after 11 months of, of this cup, uh, typically the handle will take a little bit longer to form. So might not be ready just yet, probably just bouncing off the 20 day. Um, but if we can give that more time to trade sideways or if it just shows strength and then takes out the high from, let's see, what day was this? The 16th, that's a potential buy point at 54.96. Um, I do like to see some of these longer lower wicks showing buyers stepping in uh, Wednesday and Thursday. That pushed back higher. Well, I guess Wednesday pulled, back, pulled down, but buyers stepped in, didn't close near the low. And then Thursday, we saw that reverse. We closed right at the high and saw a continuation on Friday. Higher highs, higher lows, back above those key moving averages. So again, looking for a break over 11 16th high of 54.96 as a potential buy point. But the longer this trades sideways and builds out that that handle to this giant cup, the better it trades. All right, that's gonna be the breakout watch list for the week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel. I make this breakout watch list every Sunday morning and then go live on Tuesday night. This video is sponsored by MarketSmith, which was the platform that we used to break down each of the stock's fundamentals, group strength, fund ownership, and all those other company statistics. If you found MarketSmith helpful, there's a link in the description below for you to get your own subscription. Have a great week and I'll see you guys Tuesday night for the live stream. Take care.